good day. My name is Modi Colin Tribaka. Today on our Aspen High Seas tutorial, we'll be considering the simulation of a shell and TV heat exchanger. If you've not gone through the last um, video tutorials on the foundation of Aspen High Seas, talking about understanding the basis of Aspen High Seas, I would advise you go back to that video so that you really understand what we are doing. Okay. All right. I think um, calling up our Aspen High Seas um, software won't be a challenge if you've gone through, through the previous um, video. So I've already opened it. Okay. So these stages are not going to be very difficult for those who have gone through the previous um, video tutorials. All right. So for this, we are going to be cooling um, a steam stream with um, a cold water stream. Both streams are at atmospheric pressure of um, one bar, that's 100 kilopascal. Okay, and the steam is at 200 um, degrees Celsius, while the cold water will be at 25 degrees Celsius. So that is basically what we're going to be doing right now. Okay, sorry, this is really delaying. Please hold on a little, it's, it's coming up. Okay, so we are here right now. So the, the, the first thing to do, we already know that, we will be adding our component to our component list. And the only components we need is water. Because we understand the fact that water above 100 degrees Celsius gives you steam and the cold water. So the only component, the only component we need is a pure component, which is water so okay that has been added so the next stage is to add my fluid package okay so i'll be using um okay an outcell okay we will be done with that so um, I'll be moving straight to my, my simulation environment proper. Okay. So I need to have my working space free from um, the object billet. Okay. I also like to set my units, make sure my unit set is in SI unit because I want to work with SI units. I think all these were done in the previous tu video tutorials. So I would advise you go back to that. Okay. All right. So all we need is, um, we need to add two streams. So I'll call this my steam, call it steam. So this is my steam stream. Right, and um, the more fraction for water has to be one. Okay, sorry, my number lock is not on. Okay, uh, okay, that. Okay, so go back to condition. I want this stream to be at 200 degrees Celsius, like I said earlier, around 200 degrees Celsius, and then atmospheric pressure at um, one bar. Okay, that's 100 kilo Pascal, and then um, I'm going to be assuming uh, a molar flow rate of 100 kilogram mole per hour. Okay, my steam stream is fully defined okay let me define my cold water stream okay and call it cold water okay um, my composition it has to be one two okay all right okay 
I'll go back to condition and um okay both are operating at um, atmospheric pressure okay let's say um, temperature is 25 all right so I'm assuming a more flow rate of um, um okay let's say 50 it's a 50 kilogram of bar. Okay, you see other parameters you calculated your mass flow rates, your standard liquid, um, ideal liquid volume, molar enthalpy, molar entropy. Okay, you can as well go to your properties to check the properties and other properties of this particular stream. Okay, same with the steam stream. All right, we are done with this. All right, the next stage is to add my shell and sub heat exchanger can you see it on my object below just click and you drop all right this is where our design starts from so i'm going to double and uh, i'm going to double click to open up the the design environment all right so i'm going to call this my okay let me call this you can, you can change the name you can decide to leave it at e100 depending on how you love your equipment to be named so i'm going to call it hx it's a question for my heat m um, heat exchanger okay so on the tube side we have this thing coming in through the tube side so call this um, um call this um cold cold steam okay it's a cold steam all right and then um, say okay here we'll have our cold water coming in and then um, that's a shell inlet shell side outlets we have our warm water coming up okay so um like i told us in the first video i see is um is user friendly is an interactive software it tells you what next to do or what you've not done so from this tab you can see unknown delta p so we'll move straight to our parameters hope you're following me okay still under the design tab we'll go to the parameters tab okay you see we have um the shell side pressure drop and the tube side so let's assume a pressure drop of five Okay, your pressure drop is totally dependent on the design you're doing. Okay, all right. Uh, so for the shell side um, pressure drop, let's say um, let's leave it at three kilopascal. Okay. Now, can you see? I is telling us that this is under specified. Okay. Before we move to the next stage, there's something I would like to explain. All right. Can you see this heat exchanger model? We have various types of um, exchanger models, but I love using simple weighted. I'm going to be explaining the simple endpoint and simple weighted. What's um, for a heat exchanger design that doesn't really have um, um, a long, I would like maybe the, the, the tube side or the shell side, the length of, of, of the fluid, uh, the distance, of, sorry, the distance that the fluid tra um, um, moves in the course of this exchange of heat is not when it's not too long okay you can use your simple endpoints in the sense that you just consider what your inlet temperature and your outlet temperature right okay but when you have um, a long a long distance remember you have at each point in the uh, in the pipeline that is your tube side or your shell side there's always a temperature drop okay due to the the exchange of heat between the hot steam or the hot stream and the cold stream okay now the simple endpoint uses just one ua that's um, your coefficient of um, heat transfer and the, at times your your um what's it called your transfer heat transfer area that's your ua and your um lmtd that's your logarithmic mean temperature difference okay it will just take um one one point now but for the simple weighted this um breaks the heating curves it breaks it into different heating curves and for each of the heating curves different ua and lmtd have been calculated so at the end of the calculation it takes the average okay 
which um, makes um, the value more more efficient okay so i love using simple weighted heat exchanger model all right so i'm going to change this to simple weighted heat exchanger model okay this is still under specified so we'll go straight to our spec value still under the design tab can you see that okay now it is the degree of freedom is one showing that um you have the number of um, equations is not equal to the number of variables all right and so we need to specify another um variable process variable all right okay now the heat balance is already specified that is zero and you have um, it's active okay we don't need this so we have to uncheck this box all right i'm going to be adding a spec and i'm going to be add I'll, I'll be calling this spec uh, um, temperature approach temperature approach temperature approach okay and then under the type of this i'm going to be choosing a minimum approach now by minimum temperature approach i mean it means the the um temperature difference between our steam stream and um, the warm water okay do you, do, you, do you remember do you understand what I'm saying okay just hold on a little when, when I go back to the connection tab I'll show you better all right so the overall not the pass I choose the overall so I need my my um, Minimum average temperature to be 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, now it's solved. But that's not all. Let me explain what I mean by minimum temperature average. Now let's go back to our connection. Hope you're still with me. Now, this is the two side inlet this is steam. What I mean by minimum temperature approach. It is the difference between the temperature of this stream, the steam stream, and the warm water. Remember, this cold water comes in and takes up some heat from the steam stream. Do you remember that? Okay, and this is the outlet of this cold water. This cold water comes out hotter than the previous stream entering. Okay, it takes up some heat from here. So, the temperature difference between the steam stream and this warm water stream is your minimum temperature average you get it right so that's all to designing of a heat exchanger all right so from your specifications you choose your specification based on the parameters or the variables that you have for example let's assume you have your if you know your delta t that's your um, delta temperature if you know the temperature of the outgoing stream you know the you know your ua your lmtd you know your duty your duty ratio you can specify those ones it might it is not necessarily um compulsory that you specify your minimum approach okay so you can specify any of this that is when you have the variables when you have the sorry their values i mean to say do you understand okay so that's that okay from there you can go to your rating all right this is where you rate you rate your um shell ht coefficient and um everything you need to fix in you can see your tube volume calculated from everything you gave to hisis okay when you come to worksheets as you can see um the steam temperature was what 200 the cold stream or the cold steam is 98 so this was cooled from 200 to 98 degree celsius and um this um the water temperature was heated up from what 25 to 98 can you see that i remember a minimum temperature difference a minimum temperature approach was what 50 so the difference 
200 minus 98. So 98 plus 50. Sorry, what am I saying? Sorry, sorry, I'm coming. One minute, please. One minute. Still there. Sorry. Okay. So you can easily come here and check your values you've gotten from your calculations for your performance under the performance you can get the duty of your heat exchanger the heat leak heat loss okay check your plots that is your pressure temperature plots okay and you can choose um, whatever you want the plots your enthalpy and a whole lot of that you can also check up your tables okay all right now the shear side temperature distribution and pressure all right so i hope we've learned something today and in our next class we'll be considering different design entirely all right so let me try and arrange this a little so i'm going to be rotating this to 90 degree to look a little bit nice to the eyes okay this should be rotated 90 degrees too okay so this is the design of our shell and tube heat exchanger using aspen heises version 8.4 I remember how to serve more the calling to Baka. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you once again.